Hello. Today I'll be going over a general guide on healing. This will include the differences between healers, the fundamentals of healing, the concept of triage healing, along with some practical examples and applications of our tools. While this guide won't be comprehensive of everything there is to learn, it will get you started on your journey to healing harder content. Before we start, it's important to preface everything in this video with this one statement. The most important part of getting better is learning from your mistakes, and how to prevent said mistakes in the future. This goes for every role, but every death in this game is preventable. As a result, it's your job to identify the root cause of a death, or a wipe, and adjust accordingly. To begin, pure healers specialize on efficiently healing players back to full health with big potency heals and regens while shield healers specialize on mitigating damage incoming to the party, with their shields, which act as an overheal or temporary health. Generally speaking, pure healers, white mage and astrologian, are considered reactive healers, where they heal the group once the damage goes out. Our shield healers, on the other hand, scholar and sage, are considered proactive by preparing to reduce incoming damage by their shields, or external mitigation. Because of their fundamental differences in lower level content like Coils, Alexander, or even Omega, having one pure and one shield healer is ideal for the majority of fights as they need each other to accomplish their main goal, keeping the group alive. There are many differences between healers, but there are a handful of universal abilities they share. A weak, single target, but mana efficient heal a stronger, GCD-efficient single-target heal, an AoE pure shield and or regen heal. They also have a single-target damage spell, a single-target damage over time spell, and an AoE spell. Now, there is quite a bit of information on the screen here, so let's start with just one class for now. White Mage. White Mage is considered to be the easiest healer to play, as it is incredibly straightforward and intuitive with its buttons, whereas a healer like Astrologen has a lot more going on in its kit. With these seven fundamental GCD abilities, let's break them down bit by bit. Everything you do in this game has an inherent cost associated with it. As a healer, these costs include your GCD window, and the weave windows they may give you, the MP cost, the abilities cooldown, and other class-specific resources. Starting with the single target healing spells, we have Cure 1, a 450 potency, 400 MP heal, with a base 1.5 second cast that has a 15% chance of making our next Cure 2 free. And Cure 2, a 700 potency, 1000 MP heal, with a 2.0 second base cast. Looking at the metrics, we can determine that Cure 1 is incredibly MP efficient per GCD, with its base cost along with the free cure, but Cure 2 is GCD efficient. As you progress through the game, you are given tools to either circumvent mana costs or heal without spending mana at all, so this makes Cure 2 superior in the vast majority of situations. Though this doesn't mean Cure 1 is entirely useless. In ARR content like Coils, when the fights are designed for healers to be spamming heals, Cure 1 is actually quite the good non-regen heal to be spamming. It's a mana efficient option and has a faster cast time to boot. There are situations where you need to press Cure 1 to heal damage that Cure 2 would be too slow to get. That 0.5 seconds between the casts can make the difference sometimes. However, Cure One's usefulness does deteriorate as you progress further into content. So, it's generally something people take off of their hotbars and forget about. By level 70, the number of use cases for Cure One become slim at best. Speaking of regens, that is one of the perks of being a pure healer, is having a mana and GCD efficient heal through regens. With an MP cost of 400 and no cast time, Regen will heal for a whopping 1200 potency over its 18 second duration. That's nearly three times the healing for the same MP cost as Cure 1, for only one GCD. 
Reading the tooltip, it may be a little confusing as to how we got to this 1200 potency number. In Final Fantasy XIV, spells and abilities which list a potency, followed by a duration, are considered to be damage or healing over time. These skills will register their potency every 3 seconds. As this is an 18 second duration spell, it will tick a total of 6 times before it runs out. Going back to the chart from earlier, this makes regen our most efficient heal, and should be your first consideration when it comes to spending a GCD to heal. However, since it's healing over time, it's important that we consider if the healing will be enough by the time the next instance of damage goes out. To review, we've identified three spells in our kit as a white mage, a fast, mana efficient heal, a slower, GCD efficient heal, and an instant healing over time spell that's both mana and GCD efficient. Each have their pros and cons, along with their respective use cases. There are some abilities that are off the global cooldown, also referred to as an OGCD, which just means that they can be pressed while the GCD is rolling. Specifically for Final Fantasy, these are abilities which are weaved between your GCDs, but you can either get one or two weaves depending on the cast time of your ability. As a rule of thumb, we want to prioritize not clipping GCDs with these weaves to stay efficient, where clipping is defined as delaying your GCD cast because your weave window overlaps with your GCD. Of course, these aren't all of White Mage's abilities. Instead of looking over absolutely everything, I'm going to be adding in just a couple of abilities to consider in that resource management section from earlier. These abilities are Tetragrammaton, shortened to Tetra, a level 60 OGCD ability, which has a 60 second cooldown, and has a potency of 700. And Benediction, shortened to Benny, a level 50 OGCD ability with a 180 second cooldown, and heals the target to full HP. Something to note about Tetra, Benny, and any other ability is that they don't have any MP costs associated with them. With Weaving defined, along with identifying a couple of abilities we can use, let's look at our resources we listed earlier. The good thing with pressing Tetra or Benny is that they have no associated mana cost, but are cooldowns, which is a valuable resource at times. Let's use a practical example here. With only Tetra in Cure 2, this would require a total of 3 Cure 2s and 1 Tetra to heal adequately, with Tetra being saved for the heavy instance of damage. Now with the addition of Regen, and being nearly twice as powerful as Cure 2, we can be more efficient here. Before the tank takes medium damage, we can throw up our regen onto the tank and let it slowly heal him up for the first two instances of damage. But when we get to that heavy damage instance, we can't actually use regen here. Recall that the damage instance is too much for even Cure 2 to handle alone. 700 potency wasn't enough, so one tick of the regen certainly won't be. Even though it's less efficient over a longer period of time, the tank needs healing now, so we need to use Cure 2 and Tetra on them. After all, theoretical mana and GCD efficiency means nothing if the tank dies and causes you to wipe. But again, we could still use regen earlier on the medium damage instances. This means our new healing plan uses one regen, one Cure 2, and one Tetra. Compared to our previous plan, we saved one GCD and some mana in the process. One final thing I want to talk about is looking at your spells individually and trying to think of scenarios where you might use them. Many spells and abilities, Cure 1 included, have their use cases, but it's always worth keeping in mind that sometimes there could be no use cases for a given spell. Next on our list is the concept of triage. This is actually a real-world term used by combat medics to describe their prioritization of healing in combat. In-game, triage is a complicated concept, so in this video we'll only be brushing over basic theory. 
The definition of triage, for our purposes, is the capability of understanding who needs healing, what healing they need, and in what order they need to be healed in. This concept is really only applicable while progging a fight, but since prog is so important, I believe triage to be an essential skill every healer needs to learn. However, it's also the hardest, and theory can only take you so far. It involves lots of rapid decision making that you can only get better at by being in those crisis situations where you're actively applying triage. Let's take another basic scenario into consideration. Your party list shows as you at 100%, your tank at 50, and your DPS at 20. The question here is, who should you be healing? Much like asking should you be using Cure 2 or Tetra, the answer is, it depends. Your first instinct might be to heal the DPS, as they are the lowest HP, and therefore, at the highest risk of death. However, we don't have all of the necessary context to make a proper decision. What's about to happen next in the fight? If, if it's a tank buster and you decide to heal the DPS, the tank will die and the healing to that DPS is now completely useless. If it's a raid wide and you decide to heal the tank, then the DPS will die for nothing. Let's look at another timeline for this scenario. Now that we have some context, we can make the appropriate decision for our initial scenario. Based on the timeline, it looks like the tank is about to take a tank buster, and it's about another 20 seconds from now until the DPS will be receiving any more damage. This means, for now, we can safely ignore him and focus on the tank who's about to get blasted in the next 5 seconds. He needs immediate healing and regens would be too slow as the damage is coming out too soon which means we'll have to use Cure 2 and Tetra here. Let's advance the timeline a step after the tank has been sufficiently healed and has taken a tank buster. Our health bar should be looking like this. We're at 100, the tank is at 20, and the DPS is at 20. We once again need to figure out who we're healing. But remember, healing only matters in the context of what damage is being done. In theory, if the DPS never takes damage again for the entire fight, we could actually just leave him at 20%. Although, he would probably complain. Steal my character! If I die, it's your fault! Take some fucking accountability! Dog shit fucking healers! I'm fucking god, bro! The fucking audacity on these motherfucking healers! Shut the fuck up and heal me! You are fucking dog shit! Our context here being that both are taking medium damage in 15 seconds. Neither are under direct threat, so we can use efficient regens to get them both back up before the next damage instance. This is an example of one of the three aspects of triage, which is understanding the danger the party is in, and knowing how to prevent said danger. But that's not all triage is. And this was a pretty pleasant scenario because everyone got to live. Let's take a look at our final scenario. This is an unfortunate situation to be in. With just Cure 2 and Tetra in our kit, we only have time to save two of our three party members. Someone has to die, and it's your job to make sure the correct person does. In the next five seconds, everybody will be damaged, which leaves us only room for two GCDs. We could use two Cure 2s and weave a Tetra to heal everyone up for this raid wide that is coming up, but we'll immediately run into a problem. Five seconds later, the tank will be taking heavy damage from a buster. As you may recall, we needed both Cure 2 and Tetra to survive this damage. Wasting the Tetra now will only result in delaying the inevitable and making the situation spiral out of control. This brings us back to the original predicament who must die in this situation? The answer isn't always so simple, but let's look at what each player brings to the table. You are the healer, and if you die, there is no more healing. Dying to light damage will ensure the tank does not survive the oncoming buster to follow. The tank is the only one in the party to survive the busters from the boss with their mitigations. Without him, even at full health, you, or even the DPS, will surely die to the boss's damage. At this point, the DPS doesn't have too much going for it. While we need the damage he provides to eventually kill the big bad, that's a long-term problem and we currently 
are facing a short-term crisis. After analyzing the situation, we can see that both you and the tank are required for the group to ultimately survive this conundrum, while the DPS is, sadly, not. Let's enact our plan to heal us and the tank with Cure 2 before the light damage goes out and say our farewells to the DPS. Now that the damage has gone out and we are down one member in our party, the HP values are still looking scarce. Your first instinct may be to heal ourselves, but recall that how we got into the situation to begin with. We aren't in any immediate danger, but the tank is. Since we saved our Tetra specifically for this buster, we will be able to use it and Cure 2 to save the tank from the buster. We successfully survived the crisis and can now start looking to recover, bringing our sad little DPS back to life. In summary, you need to understand what everyone's current worth is to effectively choose who to heal. You then have to prioritize who to heal based on the upcoming damage, even if it means letting others die or even yourself. It's easy to panic and subconsciously resort to that instinctual behavior of either selfishly keeping yourself alive or selflessly trying to save others. You need to keep a level head and calmly analyze the situation to keep the important assets of your group alive and well. With this, we've gone over the second basic aspect of triage, priority. The third and final aspect is autopsy. As mentioned at the start of the video, every death in this game is preventable. Does this mean the DPS made a mistake since he ended up dying during our little crisis? Well, no. As we outlined in our analysis earlier, saving him would have doomed the group to failure. In fact, it was ideal as we managed to recover and continue the pull. The mistake then was getting here in the first place. In our case, we can simply look at the timeline outlined and identify the problem quickly. However, in real prog, it's not uncommon to review footage or logs to see how the issue occurred. Let's look at the timeline now. On our previous poll, 10 seconds into the fight we were already in the crisis. It required more healing than we could realistically do with just our two GCDs. If we use two of our four GCDs to cast regen on ourselves and the DPS, we can actually survive the oncoming damage. With a couple of ticks from our hot, we can very comfortably use our two GCD slots in between the medium and light damage to heal up the tank instead. It's not much healing, but we didn't need much to survive to begin with. With this new plan, we can heal up the tank for the buster and keep our party alive and healthy. Of course, the situation could have been solved with a Cure 3 or even a Medica 2, but sometimes everyone is not so neatly stacked up for those group heals. Additionally, this was oversimplified by limiting ourselves to just a couple of spells and one ability to set some foundation to build off of. To this end, level 50 content, which is primarily the Coils of Bahamut, is the perfect place to begin your healing journey. The fights are designed with the idea that healers do not have to contribute damage and the amount of tools in your kit are limited to mostly GCD heals. This creates good habits early. Once you progress into Stormblood and beyond, healers are expected to be contributing their fair share of damage, so keep that in mind. One final thing I'd like to mention is keep in mind the timeline of the fight before you start trying to raise your fallen comrades. If the party is low and a Raid White is about to come out, you might find yourself with more fresh corpses than you started with if you decide to prioritize raising over healing. And with that, we've covered the three parts of triage, danger, priority, and autopsy. Knowing what's going to happen, prevent the important people from dying, and then figure out how to do it better next time. The main thing now is to put yourself out there and start healing. If you made it this far, I want to thank you, and I do genuinely hope that you start getting into healing, and this helps you start your healing journey. 
whenever I first started, I had no resources to go off of, and my co-healer was not particularly helpful. So most of what I'm talking about here is from pure experience, starting from literally the coils of Bahamut and going into Alexander and Omega, including Ukab. Now, granted, I'm also a blind raider, so there was a lot more time to learn how to use my abilities, and whenever you're doing mind content, damage is not so much a priority, because you're overgeared anyways, even whenever you are synced down to the min-eye level. Regardless, I hope that this was helpful, and if this video helps you out, I would recommend you put a like on the video, and maybe even subscribe. In the future, I'm going to be making class-specific guides talking about abilities and going over scenarios on how you should press your buttons. Uh, I have a lot of time in Scholar, so you should expect a very detailed Scholar video, but I do run this over with other healers that I've met over the two years that I've been raiding to make sure that everything is accurate. So, again, like the video if you enjoyed it. I put a lot of time and effort into making this possible. And I'll see you out there.